so the big bad ass says I pulled out my 401 slash 457 without paying them. That was over 15 years ago. So still I do. Oh, what's he talking about? He's talking about uh, a 401 K plan. That's what he means when he says 401. A 401 K is uh, a retirement plan that you can participate in through your employer. If they offer it, you put money into the plan and that money grows either tax deferred if it's a traditional 401k or, or tax free if it's Roth. And then you take you can take money out uh, after you're 59 and a half without paying taxes or penalties. 457, he's talking about a 457B plan, which operates very similarly to a 401k, except you usually see 457B plans at um, state and local government employers, for example, uh, or sometimes at nonprofits as well. Right, but the rules are are uh, the same. Now, if you take out distributions from your 401k be uh, before you turn 59 and a half, uh, ooh, and assuming it is just a, a traditional 401k, you're going to have to pay tax on that distribution in addition to a 10% penalty at the federal level. And your state may impose uh, penalties as well. Here in California, there's a 2.5% penalty on such distributions. Um, there are exceptions. Right. There's a, a, um, a page on the IRS website that talks about this. Right. Most retirement plan distributions are subject to income tax and may be subject to an additional 10 percent tax. Uh, but then there's this table here of exceptions uh, to the 10 percent additional tax. Uh, some of the most common ones are uh, disability, total and permanent disability of the, of the owner. That's an exception. Um, uh, there is some people think there is, but there is not an exception for 401ks to pay for college tuition or something like that. Um, and same thing for the $10,000 uh, to buy your first home. Uh, while that's the case for IRAs, it's not the case uh, for 401ks. I don't want to get too deep into that because that is, is not the nature uh, of, the, of uh, Big Badass's question. We're assuming that his uh, 401k 457 distribution did not qualify for an exception, right? So he would have taken it out uh, subject to taxes and I presume penalties if he was younger than 59 and a half. And so he says, hey, that was over 15 years ago. Do I still owe? Um, that depends on uh, a number of things, uh, Big Badass. Um, for one, did you file that tax return for that year, 15 years ago, reporting that early distribution? Of course, when you file a tax return, you take out money from your 401k early, you have to attach that form 5329 on which the penalty on the early distribution is calculated. You can see down here, uh, additional tax on early distributions, right? It's basically, uh, you know, 10%, right? 10% penalty, and your state may have their own penalties. Um, but to, to kind of get to the nature of Big Badass's question here, what he's getting at is he made this comment on my video how the, about the IRS's 10 year statute of limitations to collect a tax debt. So he's thinking, hey, uh, th this early distribution from my 401k happened 15 years ago which is longer than 10 years, do I still owe? Um, really, uh, Big Bad has to give you like a specific answer, we'd have to actually review your account with the IRS, right? I can't, I can't tell you definitively, be, definitively right now. Why not? Because there's a couple things here that would have had to have been done for that 10 year clock to even start running. For one thing, the tax on this debt must have been assessed. The typical way that a tax is assessed is a taxpayer files a tax return IRS receives and processes that tax return and then assesses tax against the taxpayer accordingly. An assessment of tax simply means that uh, the, the, the tax liability has been recorded on the government's books against the taxpayer, right? So that had to have been done. Um, so that's typically done by filing a tax return, like I said, or it could be done by the IRS filing what's called an SFR or substitute for return if a taxpayer does not file their required return. So if Assuming that assessment was made big bad uh, big badass um, longer than ten years ago, right? Either an assessment based on a return you filed or an assessment based on a substitute for return the IRS prepared for you, then it, it it's it's possible that that tax debt has dropped off, and you uh, it's been written off the IRS's books and they can't go after you, uh, you for it anymore. That said, as I explained in the video on the statute of limitations on collections. Um, there are certain things called tolling events that can extend the IRS's 10 year time limit to collect. For example, if you submit an offer in compromise, 
uh, during the pe the whole time between the time that the IRS uh, receives the offer and, and deems it processable to the time that the IRS makes a decision on the offer, including the period of time uh, for any appeals that you made if the offer was rejected. During that whole time, that whole time span, however many days that is, is added on to that 10-year clock and extends the IRS's 10-year clock by that length of time, plus 30 days. If you file for bankruptcy, uh, that whole time that you are in bankruptcy, right, before your bankruptcy is discharged, uh, that whole period of time extends that the 10-year time limit the IRS has to collect a debt. And plus with bankruptcy, they added an additional six months after that time. If you submit an installment agreement request and it's rejected, uh, there's a 30-day period that you have to appeal that rejection of your installment agreement request. That 30-day period will extend the, the, the time limit that the IRS has to collect. Over on the Choice Tax Relief uh, website, I have an article, um, choicetaxrelief.com slash IRS slash statute dash of dash limitations, uh, where we have a table showing uh, you know, the, the, the major tolling events that can extend uh, the IRS statute limitations to collect, right? You can kind of see that, that, that table there. Um, so I guess what, what I'm saying kind of in summary here um, to Big Badass is that it's, you know, I, I can't say at right now definitively whether um, that you still owe that tax attributable to that distribution from your 401k or 457b. We have to really do a full analysis of your IRS account uh, to determine that. Uh, but hopefully you can kind of fill in the blanks there of your own situation uh, and what you know of your own life uh, to maybe make a reasonable determination uh, of that. You could also try to get through to the IRS and uh, simply ask them. Uh, but of course, their phone lines are quite busy, despite what the IRS commissioner is saying recently that, oh, their phone lines are, are, are you know, better than ever. Now, I will say they're better than they were a couple years ago, but there's still uh, a lot to be asked of the IRS when it comes to their phone operation. They might pick up a little bit faster, but man, they got some folks answering the phones these days who just do not know what they're talking about. Anyway, folks, uh, thanks so much for watching this video. If you have a question of your own about your tax situation or someone else's tax situation, leave a comment. Uh, I may feature it in a video uh, for the benefit of my entire audience. I have some other tax relief videos here on the left-hand side of your screen. If you are facing a tax issue, unfiled tax returns, uh, you owe at least $10,000 in back tax debt, please uh, reach out to us. You can visit, visit us at choicetaxrelief.com, fill out the form on the site, give us a call, or give us a call at 866-8000-TAX. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.